the long and winding road to Beechworth. Look at that foliage. Mmm, Beechworth, I can see it now. I mean, I will when we get there. Oh, you know what I'm gonna get when we get there? Probably a pie, unless it's closed because of COVID. Oh, Beechworth, I can't wait to get there. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And now, coming to you not live from the Beechworth Town Hall, it's the Keep Victoria Beautiful Sustainable Communities Tidy Town Awards with your host, Charlie Ranger! Welcome to the 38th year of the Keep Victoria Beautiful Sustainable Communities Tidy Town Awards. And seriously, out of safety, thank you for not being here in virtual Beechworth where this award ceremony is being held. Beautiful, isn't it? Smell that honey and beer, mmm, <laughs> Beechworth. My name is Charlie Ranger and it is my pleasure to be your host tonight. On behalf of the board of Keep Victoria Beautiful and our guests, we acknowledge the indigenous communities as the first owners of this country. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand today. We would like to pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, extending our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their ongoing connection to land, sea and community. We would like to give a huge thank you also to everyone who's made this year's awards possible. The KVB Board, Dick Gross, Enzo Brasella, Kirsty Richards, John Valstro and Carly Wickenton, KVB CEO Sabina Wills, judges Robbie Ray, Brian Winch, Matthew Bell, Alan Thomas, Louise Osborne, Pitt Bell and Meg Sargent, mayors, councillors and CEOs of shires and regional councils, and all our valued volunteers and communities in regional and rural Victoria. Thanks to all the KVB team, especially Emma White, who steers the awards ship so well. Big thanks to Gary Mogford, Sam Lawson, and Anton Tejeda. Normally in awards ceremonies, you get the mentioned people to like raise their hands so they can be acknowledged publicly. So if those people that I just mentioned can, can do that, so everyone can, you know, everyone sitting next to them on the couch knows who they are. And if everyone sitting next to them can just give them a little clap too. No, seriously, do it. Guys, do it. Tonight's not gonna work if you don't. There we go, that's better. Keep Victoria Beautiful welcomes their partners and sponsors of this year's Sustainable Communities Tiny Town Awards. The 2020 Sustainable Communities Tidy Town Awards are funded by the Victorian Government through the Community Support Fund and Awards Online. I would now like to welcome our patron, Linda DeSalle, Governor of Victoria, to say a few words. Councillor Dick Gross, Chair of Keep Victoria Beautiful, Miss Sabina Wills, CEO, and of course, the Honourable Lily D'Ambrosio, Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, and all distinguished guests. First, could I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm standing and pay my respects to their elders past and present and any elders who are gathered with us in this beautiful natural setting, you can even hear the birds singing. Well, when we held a reception here in February this year to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Keep Victoria Beautiful, none of us could have imagined that within a relatively short time, we'd be celebrating this as a virtual event. Well, no one needs me to dwell on the challenges thrown up by this global pandemic. We've all experienced and or observed it only too keenly. So instead, let me reflect upon one of the more positive aspects that I've noticed. Never have we been more aware of our local environments than during the unusual experience of being kept from them. The old adage that absence makes the heart grow fonder has I think proven to be absolutely true. Having been confined to quarters as it were for so much of our time, how much have we all appreciated the time that we have been able to have out of our homes? How much good energy have we derived from green and clean spaces, from an environment built or natural that has enhanced a feeling of calm? The stage is, I think, very well set for us all to reflect on these things as to how we want to emerge from this crisis 
and as to our priorities as we reset. I must say Keep Victoria Beautiful has always been ahead of the curve, an expression that now resonates with a, a deeper meaning than ever before. But you have long realised the importance of working with community to promote awareness of our environment and to preserve and enhance our heritage through beautification. So even though we can't be together, as KVB's proud patron, I congratulate each one of you who are being recognised in these awards. Best of luck too for those who will be heading in the future into the national awards. Some of you, I imagine, have been frustrated by not being able to volunteer at your usual pace across these last months. I do hope that shortly you'll be able to be back doing what you do so generously on all our behalves. Thank you. Thank you too to Chair Dick Gross and to board members, to the CEO and to KVB's dedicated staff. Thank you of course to DELP for supporting this important recognition and to the judges, many of whom I know have given time to this exacting task for many years now. I wish you all have an enjoyable award ceremony. Thank you. Thank you to the Honourable Linda Dessau, Governor of Victoria. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will list all the finalists and announce the highly commended and the winners of each category. Then conclude with the prestigious Sustainable Communities Tidy Town Award for 2020. Most likely a place none of us will be allowed to visit until 2021, which is great if you think about it because fewer people makes it easier to keep a tidy town, well, tidy. The first award tonight is for education. Here are all the nominees. Now this award recognises an educational campaign or program that results in empowerment and behaviour change that builds the community. It's kind of like when Shrek educated the community that not all ogres are bad, although they do live in swamps which immediately disqualifies them from Tidy Town Awards. Mm. This year's Education Award winner is St Joseph's Catholic Primary School, Crib Point. The sea is our best friend a program that has been further embedding students' knowledge of the local area and the Boon Wurrung peoples working alongside a specialist Indigenous teacher. Great stuff, guys. Now, it's worth noting, one award in, that the winner and highly commended in every category will receive a certificate via email. Essentially, everyone's going to be a winner. Except for me. The only thing filling my inbox is a big old bundle of emptiness. But less on that later. Let's move on to the next category. The next award we have is for our community category. This award recognises any project that leads towards a stronger, more resilient and thriving community or economy. And the nominees are... Well, there are too many for me to list out loud, but I did like seeing mountain trash in there. Mountain trash, also known as trees. And check that one out, the Boomerang Bags, Mount Martha Group. Best thing about these guys, they always come back. But um, tsh. This award has two finalists that have been highly commended. And they are Achuka Neighbourhood House, free community soup deliveries. And Boomerang Bags, Mount Martha, scrubs for COVID-19 medical staff. I told you they'd come back. But um, tsh. Congratulations to those guys. And finally, this year's community category was so close in scores that they actually tied and we couldn't pick just one winner. What? Congratulations to Mornington Peninsula Shire Municipal Emergency Malakuta Evacuation and Tomorrow Today Education Foundation. Wanna play but can't pay sports initiative. Our first winner, the MPSMEME -E, assisted up to 4,000 people on the beach at Malakuta via a number of agencies with overall command through the State Control Centre. The second winner, and just to keep it simple, the TTEFWPBCPSI helped 263 young people attend and try 30 different activities in 2019. Sports, hobby groups, music, arts, dance and drama, to name a few, improving the health and well-being of young people. The next award we have is for energy. Now this award recognises any project that shows leadership and innovation in conservation, production and distribution of energy. And here are the nominees. 
And you'll notice we have two finalists. Let's just say your chance of a win here are very, very good, at least 50%. Well, if not more, depending on what level maths you completed at school. But this year's energy winner is Horsham Rural City Council, energising communities. Now Horsham City Council maintained a network of community halls run by locals. Energy bills have forever been an issue, but these locals successfully drove to install solar panels that cut bills, created income and reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Seeing immediate success, the scheme's already been greenlit for 2021. The next award we have tonight is for environment, and here are the nominees. Now this award recognises projects that protect, restore and prevent damage to the natural environment. It's good to see Wodonga Urban Land Care Network. Is it Albury? Is it Wodonga? <laughs> Nobody knows. And the winner is... Dolphin Research Institute, I See, I Care Marine Ambassadors. Now, hey, uh, guys, just off the cuff, fun fact about dolphins, they have two stomachs. Bit of fun or just greedy? The objective of this project was promoting significant behaviour change, focusing on the key aims of reduce, reuse, repurpose and recycle as a last resort. The program has grown from 25 schools in 2011 to almost 100 this year across the Melbourne metropolitan area. Now our next category is Litter. Here are the nominees. Now this award recognises projects that take action to address their local litter issues. And for that reason, we're gonna throw them in the metaphorical bin of goodwill and congratulations. The litter category has a finalist who is highly commended, and that is A-Team. Well done, you guys. And this year's litter winner is Josephine Jones, Map of Australia. Melbourne Zoo asked Josephine to make a sculpture of the map of Australia 2 by 2.3 metres from litter. 200 kilograms of litter was sifted through, leaving an artwork comprising of 16 kilograms of waste, including 5,500 cigarette butts. Let's just say this piece of art was smoking. Oh. <laughs> okay guys, it's now time to throw to a definitely not pre-recorded video of our man on the spot, Jimmy Eaton. He's gonna give us a brief history of tidy towns. Hey Jimmy, how's the weather out there? Oh, why thank you Charlie, it's one of my favourite jackets. Tidiness. Giving parents, housemates and romantically involved couples something to argue about for over 40,000 years. Ever since the first cavemen dragged a saber-toothed tiger home for lunch, other cave people have been there to say, hey mate, I'm not your mother, take that carcass outside and make no bones about it. Some of the earliest tools ever made by humans were for the purpose of tidying. Primitive forms of brooms and brushes were made by ancient Mesopotamians to remove dirt from floors and other surfaces in the home, which was handy as the option of buying them from Bunnings was still a long way off. After accidentally mixing fresh water with rendered animal fat, humans also created soap. This meant things could be even tidier, and smelly blokes called Greg could finally chat to their girlfriends without her passing out from the fumes. As humans moved from caves to towns, so too did their quest to keep things tidy. It was in Ireland 1958 that the first ever tidy town competition took place and was won by the town of Glenties. Some say they were indeed the tidiest town, others say they were the only town in the competition. Tidy towns finally made their way to the shores of Western Australia in 1968, which must have been weird for WA, not being 20 years behind the rest of the country. But by the summer of 1991, Tidy Towns was an Aussie-wide competition, giving towns all over our wide brown land a healthy sense of competition, national pride, and of course, tidiness. This rich history has led us right up until tonight. So whether you're from Seymour or Shepparton, Hastings, Horsham, Bradford, Bellina, Mornington or Mafra, Let's raise a broom and pay tribute to the history of Tidy Towns. Back to you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. You're right, I do love a good recipe now and then. But now it's time for the Waste Award, and here are all the nominees for the Waste Award. This award recognises projects that focus on minimising what goes into landfill. 
The waste category has a finalist who is highly commended, and that is the Rye Community House Zero Waste Festival. Congratulations, you guys. But this year's waste winner is the Campaspe Shire Council Give a Scrap. Now those guys began planning in 2018 for a combined food and garden waste curbside collection, starting on the 1st of July, 2019. And the response has been amazing, with 67% of residents opting into the program. Of course, the highlight here is the clever wordplay, where give a scrap is to, supposed to sound like give a- Charlie. Oh, we're not, we don't say it. Okay, good, let's move on. The next award is Social Wellbeing, which was the most popular category. And a massive congratulations to all the nominees, and there are a lot of them. This award recognises projects that contribute to an accessible community with resilient, healthy and happy people. The social wellbeing category has a number of highly commended entries, and they are the Wimmera Hospice Care Auxiliary and Cherished Pets Foundation Community Pet Care Project. But this year's social wellbeing winner is Tomorrow Today Education Foundation Connect9 Mentoring Program. Designed specifically for Benella's young people by Tomorrow Today, parts of a sustained community effort to improve long-term educational results and combat entrenched disadvantage. Connecting them to new hobbies, people, experiences and sports. Congratulations guys. And now for some light entertainment in the form of magic. Think of a number guys. You're sitting there on your couch, I want you to think of a number. I'm gonna do a bit of magic here. Think of a number, any number, don't change it. Don't change it. Your number is seven. If your number was seven, ooh, magic. If it wasn't seven, I, I, I did say don't change it. So Houdini, there you go guys. He wasn't that great after all. Oh. Let's move on. <laughs> the next award we have is for the heritage and culture category. Now this award is any project that recognizes outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of a community's heritage and culture. And this year's heritage and culture winner is Willowra Modern Incorporated, heartbeat of Willowra. After the Willowra railway station, there's a tongue twister, fell to disrepair and vandals, a community group of volunteers with the help of Victrack, Ararat Council and Willowra Historical Society have converted it into a gallery space, cultural precinct and community hub. You might say, full steam ahead. Oh, there's another one of those dad jokes. <laughs> Let's go to the next award, which is Indigenous Culture. Now this award recognises any project that recognises outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of the rich, diverse culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The Indigenous Culture category has a highly commended finalist, and that is the Mornington Peninsula Shire Youth Services Rap for Rap. Well done, you guys. And this year's Indigenous Culture winner is the Gullum Gullum Aboriginal Cooperative, Gullum Gullum NADOC Art Exhibition 2019. An art project initiated in response to community feedback regarding the lack of opportunities for local Aboriginals to learn, share teachings, and celebrate local language and culture in an artistic way. Great work, guys. And now, let's throw to me in some more comfy surrounds with more awards. Thanks, me. <laughs> Good guy, that. Our next award is Young Legend. Now, I used to be a young legend, then I grew up, and wasn't a legend anymore. But no matter. This award recognises an individual or group of people, all 25 years or younger, who demonstrate outstanding contributions to any of the categories. The Young Legend category has a highly commended finalist, and that is Mia Rivera. Sexy and Safe Youth Consultations. Mia, I hope I'm saying your name right. This year's Young Legend winner, though, is very special. The winner had a perfect score, and we didn't see this on any other entry. But wait, we've got drama right now that puts the bold and the beautiful to shame. We had another perfect score for Young Legends. Two perfect 
10 out of 10 scores. What? Congratulations to Zach Curry of the Horsham Agricultural Society and Harrison Hansen of Western Port Secondary College. Now, Zach has been a legend in organising, among other things, the Horsham Show, the Horse Show, the New Year's Eve family event, Horsham's Irish Festival, regular working bees, and of course, my wardrobe. He just doesn't know about that last one yet. Harrison, meanwhile, has been mentoring year three and four students to support them transitioning to secondary school, running year seven camp, running school tours, and the human powered vehicle team. I mean, come on, Flintstones, eat your heart out. Amazing work from those two legends. Well done, guys. And now to another legend that knows a little something about a lot. Hey, Jimmy Eaton, it's over to you. Everybody knows and loves tidy towns. Towns taking that terrific track towards tenaciously tidying their towns triumphantly. But now let's meet some fair dinkum Aussie tidy towns folk who have taken that extra step to be a tidy town titan. I am Trevor, uh, hello. I am proud to live in a tidy town and I've gone that extra step by having Talent Gatter's tidiest email inbox. What's your secret? Uh, I just don't read any of the emails. As soon as I get them, delete. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. G'day, yeah, my name's Tim. I'm from Teesdale and I've written the world's cleanest joke. What is the world's tidiest insect? What? A disinfect ant. Yeah, I said it was clean, I didn't say it was funny. I'm very honoured to hold the title of Tarang's tidiest tummy. <laughs> In just under two months of eating nothing but mung beans and cabbage, I've lost a total of 26... Kilos? No, friends. I officially obtained the tidy town of Torquay's tidiest toilet. How do you keep it so clean? No one's allowed to use it. That poop deck is locked up like Fort Knox. No one's getting in there. Someone's breached the perimeter. Code Brown, I repeat, Code Brown. Tidy Town Titans, taking that task of total tidiness to the top of the totem. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, um, I mean, I was gonna share, just nobody asked, so, you know, just, just, I, w I was, I was. Um, thank you, Jimmy. That was some amazing stuff. But now, I'd like to present these next two prestigious awards. The first being the Keep Victoria Beautiful Gift Fund, which was established to provide financial assistance to encourage and support community groups to initiate new community projects. Each year, the Gift Fund provides financial support of $1,000 to one or more grassroots projects that are in the planning stage and that will deliver sustainability outcomes or reduce litter or build capacity in local communities. The recipients of this year's KVB Gift Fund Award go to... Drum roll, please. Dedarang Primary School fights war on school waste. Turtle Bend Event Committee Turtle Bend Facilities Upgrade, DC Green Team, DC Carbon Sink, Sustainable Table, Washed Up, Not Wasted, Willowra Modern Incorporated, Heartbeat of Our Town, Courthouse Studio. And a special thanks goes to Emma Keeley MP, member for Lowen, for her donation to the Willowra Modern Incorporated project. Now up next guys, we have the Dame Phyllis Frost Award. Now the winner of this award will be an individual who demonstrates community involvement and contribution for years and a level of involvement and contribution to their community. Environmental concern, actively involved in protecting and enhancing their local environment. Leadership, evidence of leadership and guidance for others within and outside their community to achieve a positive community outcome. Keep Victoria beautiful participation current or past participation in KVB programs. Now, if your nominee is not chosen this year, don't stress, you or your nominee could be chosen in a future awards event. And this year's Dame Phyllis Frost recipient is, and another drum roll, please. Jacqueline Salter, woohoo! Oh, thanks, random hands. Winner Jackie has been a huge asset to the Mornington Peninsula. 
She's worked tirelessly with the Mornington Peninsula Land Care Group, educating children about the environment, and has obtained funding for a Women in Leadership project to mentor and empower women. Well done, Jackie. We're gonna send you that in the mail, and the way Oz Post is going, uh, that'll look beautiful on your mantle in 2023. But now, the time we've all been waiting for, the Sustainable Community Tidy Town of the Year Award. And this year's finalists are Bannockburn, Beechworth, Vanella, Dartmoor, Dimboola, Hastings, Mornington, Horsham, Mount Martha, Rosebud, Rye, and Swan Hill. And to announce the winner, I'd like to warmly welcome the Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, the Honourable Lily D'Ambrosio, to announce the Sustainable Community Tidy Town of the Year. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for welcoming me. It's great to connect with these important awards, even if we can't be in the same room together. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which I'm standing and the traditional owners of all communities who may be joining us online today. I pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and any who may be here amongst us. I'd also like to acknowledge Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desale, Governor of Victoria. It's great that we have an organisation like Keep Victoria Beautiful and the Tiny Towns Awards to support and celebrate this important work being done to keep our rural and regional towns clean and beautiful and protect the environment. Now more than ever, with all of us working and living with public health restrictions, Victorians are appreciating and enjoying their local spaces and parks. It makes the magnificent work you do in keeping them beautiful even more important. You also had to take a new approach this year to how the awards could be judged and presented. It all had to happen virtually. Regrettably, it means last year's winners, Beechworth, couldn't hold this year's event as is the custom. But despite that, the number of entries almost doubled with 12 towns competing for today's award. For me, one of the highlights of 2020 has been launching the Victorian government's $300 million 10-year waste and recycling plan, Recycling Victoria, back in February. It will deliver waste and recycling services for all Victorians and one that they can rely on. It will also be good for the economy and boost jobs across Victoria. We are also supporting communities and councils to waste less and recycle more. Some of its key features include a four bin household recycling service for all, a container deposit scheme, a waste act and a waste authority. Now to the reason we're all connecting today, the 2020 Tidy Towns Award recipient. It's my pleasure to announce that the winner is Hastings. Congratulations to everyone on the Hastings team and to the local community. Thank you for your outstanding contribution to a more beautiful Victoria. Congratulations as well to all those who've participated in some way in this year's Tidy Towns Awards. Thank you to all the volunteers from entrants to judges and everyone in between. This would not have happened without you. Thank you, the Honourable Lily D'Ambrosio. Congratulations, Hastings. And now here is your award. Oh, random hands. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. This is, this is not a couch friendly award, but I love it. I love it. There's, there you are Hastings on there, but there you are down there. Woohoo! I can, I can see you're a very tidy town. Tidier now, I just gave you a wipe. <laughs> Anyway, congratulations guys. We're gonna send this to you. I don't know how we're gonna get this. This is huge. OzPost probably won't send it. We'll probably have to use Carrier Pigeon or something. And not just one, we'll need like a thousand. So you'll hear, you'll hear them on the air. You'll, they'll go, rrr, rrr. oh, I think that's our award. And you'll be right. It's arriving. I'm, I'm gonna to need to, random hands, I need help. <laughs> random hands, come back, come back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. Oh my gosh. Well, that's gonna look lovely on the local wall, isn't it? Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It has been an absolute pleasure not having you here, but I, I sincerely hope that you feel deserving and rewarded. The incredibly hard work you do isn't justified by an awards night with a room full of people and bright lights and a few too many Cheeky glasses of the bubbly stuff. Sure, that's lovely, but the real acknowledgement of your work comes every day through the positive change you make in your community. I would like to thank and congratulate every single one of our entrants and to all the winners and finalists announced tonight, your projects have been inspirational. 
On behalf of Keep Victoria Beautiful, I'd also like to thank and give a huge, huge round of applause to all those who have helped make tonight's event very special, including the Victorian Government, who provide funding for the 2020 Sustainable Communities Tidy Towns Awards through the Community Support Fund, Beechworth for being our virtual host and making us all look like groovy dudes. Look at us using the interwebs, way! <laughs> uh, all our remarkable volunteer judges, thank you for being a part of the Tidy Towns program and we will see you in Hastings next year. Or right back here in this room with these two people off camera, which, don't get me wrong, guys, I, I've, I've had a great time. I mean, but have you been to Hastings? Oh, mwah, it's so nice. Good night. I did offer, guys. They're still here if you want them. You know, there's a lot left, but I think I'll get through them. Um, the funny thing is, there are two other people in this room um, who aren't going to have any because if they come on screen, it'll ruin the magic of film, you know? So what that means is that I get to eat them all for myself. And sharing is caring, but there's only so much caring you can do in one award ceremony, right? So I feel... I need some water. <sighs> I hope you guys have had a good night. I have. Um, and I hope you've got some chippies too. <laughs> Pretty cool world we live in, huh?